Hello and welcome to another player's guide and this time I'll be talking about uh, bringing your character to life uh, through the power of your voice uh, voice acting or something like it um, so yeah let's um, cue the music down a little bit and let's get to it um, now the last time I've been talking about a whole bunch of things and basically everything up to now is sort of an introduction. <laughs> um, just a little recap, in your turn uh, you ask questions, preferably open ones, so you get as much information as possible. Uh, if you do something always try to accompany uh, your question with an action and your action with a description. Uh, be creative with your stats. Um, if you want to have a conversation going, comment about the situation, ask about a goal or destination, uh, maybe even ask a question you already know and ask people simply how they're doing, what they're thinking. Uh, about your character, what do your stats say about your character? Um, is it a stereotype, archetype or something unique or c completely different altogether? What's the motivation in life, uh, their goals, short and long term? There's Tons of questions you can ask yourself to uh, develop your question, your uh, character. But the most important thing, as always, is uh, just expand as you go. But so far, all these things have been very descriptive. We've been playing in a way that you say, well, my character does this, or my character does this. How do you wreck your situation? Well, the character does this or says this or is there something and you ask a question it's very descriptive and I would say up to now it's been more of an action interactive action adventure than an actual role-playing game because we haven't really been actually role-playing because well that's my personal opinion but role-playing involves um, actual role-playing <laughs> uh, sort of low-key acting and then I say low-key acting because you're not on a stage you're not you know for an hour hour and a half just that character there's an interaction between you and the gaming world and you some things in the gaming world you are emoting um, to the other players as your character so that's why I don't say acting but more uh, emoting so you express to the players around you how your character does things say things how they interact with the world um, first thing rule of cool always applies if you like it do it if you don't like it don't do it everything is optional um, so yeah um, acting or emoting um, some things to consider uh, because there's a big difference between you and your character well usually there is and um, let's get this thing out of the way there we go um, there's a difference between you and your character uh, so your character would do things differently than you would but also would say things differently than you would and certainly probably would sound different than you would. So how do you determine, decide what your character uh, sounds like? Um, I say sound like because uh, in this example um, also because of uh, the COVID we've been playing online most of the time uh, so you only deal with the voice but certainly when you're uh, when this all this thing is over you play together with your friends again uh, There's also some physical acting involved maybe and um, certainly when you're LARPing there's physical acting but uh, I think that the the largest part certainly is the uh, the, the voice thing as will become clear in this video um, First thing to consider is the vocabulary because uh, you might have a um, very extensive vocabulary it might be very verbose I don't know um, but certainly your character might have a very limited uh, vocabulary or they might even 
have more words in their repertoire than you. Um, one thing to ask is where are they from? Because, um, well, certain localities have different words for the same things, uh, dialects or even a complete la completely different language. Um, so where are they from? And determine what, what is the lingo from there. Also to note is the status of your character. Uh, an upper class character would certainly use different words than a lower class character. Uh, I think a peasant um, would have uh, rather different vocabulary than a uh, high, highly schooled wizard. But it can <laughs> also be very fun to play uh, a very eloquent uh, peasant. Um, you know, it can be fun. So uh, that's it, it's a thing to consider. That's what I said here. So it's not a law or a rule. It's something to take note of. Also, the profession itself. Because um, a lot of professions have very... Uh, but with trade talk or, or the lingo or uh, jargon or whatever you want to call it. But uh, a carpenter has tools that have names. Uh, a sailor knows all the ropings and sails in the ship and they, they know all the names of the knots. And a butcher knows all the pieces of meat in an animal and they know all the names of all the cuts. And a lawyer will have all kinds of legal terms. So there's a lot of shop talk, so to speak. Um, of course, you would probably not know that, but the uh, wonderful world of internet uh, at your disposal, so you can always look some stuff up and make a little list of terms and um, have it handy and then you can throw in them occasionally. And uh, there's also the personalia, uh, age, gender, race, etc. I mean, uh, if you're playing a uh, an, uh, a beggar, a human beggar, you would still sound very different from a uh, uh, high elf beggar. I don't know, a high elf beggar may even sound very much like a human noble. May even look like it. So it's a thing to consider. Um, so now that we've determined uh, the vocabulary and made it uh, a, a sort of a reference for ourselves with words to use and um, one thing I always like to have handy is a, a little list of cuss words <laughs> because <laughs> they tend to bring a lot of flavor. Um, you can think about um, well okay this is what this person how they construct their sentences and what they actually say but how do they sound? Um, again um, some things to consider and I think in order of importance I think in this case personally I come first because you've got age age is a very determining factor in how your voice sounds I mean just look uh, you know a young boy will sound very high-pitched voice and an old man will sound you know sound like that so it's um, it's a thing to consider of course y you can always use just your normal voice that's it's always fine. I mean, like I said, everything's optional. But if you do want to uh, bring a little flavor to the table, uh, consider that. Um, same age, gender, race, etc. I mean, an orc will sound differently than an, an elf or a halfling. Um, and also, what do they look like? Um, you might have a token or a miniature that represents your character. Or you might have some mental image. Um, and the funny thing is, if you try to uh, <laughs> sculpt your face or uh, d d twist your face into a certain uh, expression that represents your character, your voice will automatically try to adapt or change to suit that character. I mean, if you put your chin all the way forward, your voice is going to sound differently. And if you put your chin all the way backwards, your voice is also going to sound differently. And also, as I now notice, it's going to be very hard to talk. So those two simple things, just changing the position of your jaw is going to make you sound differently. So if you try to uh, 
uh, you know, I imagine or uh, if you've got a reference, look at the uh, typical facial expression of your character. Uh, then um, and then try to talk. You you will automatically get a feel what for what that person would sound like. So just go ahead and twist your face in all, all kinds of crazy angles and and um, try uh, try something out that sounds cool. Of course, again, where are they from? Um, not just the the words they use are important, but also they might have an accent. Um, or they might even speak an entire language altogether, I don't know. But, um, yeah, an accent is always funny, and it's an easy thing to do. I mean, you could just be yourself, but w with a slight accent, you know, or uh, some kind of Russian accent. And um, it brings, you know, you're, you're just being yourself but instead of saying my character does this you just say it with your normal voice but with a little accent it's uh, very um, easy and fun also a way to um, bring a little flavor to the table as i said and um, then of course there's all kinds of particularities um, they might have a speech impediment like a, a lisp uh, or they c they can't say the 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 vetter r for some reason, or um, I don't know. Uh, they might be hard hearing and shout all the time, or have a very coarse voice, or whisper all the time. Or I don't know. What they, they can there can be all kinds of things um, that you imagine. Maybe they had a punch in the throat one time when they were young, and so their voice sounds like a uh, always. You know, uh, it can be all kinds of things. It's basically uh, you sitting in front of a, a mirror or the computer to record stuff and try stuff out and have fun with it. Um, some general advice to um, if you're trying out how to sound like, take care of your throat. That's, <laughs> that's the first thing. As a GM, I have tons and tons and tons of different voices, uh, but you know, uh, difficult voice uh, I would only use for a couple of lines for that NPC that only features for like a minute and I would certainly not uh, voice a character with that voice if I were a player because then I would be constantly talking like that and my throat cannot manage. So I would be talking like this but I can only manage for like uh, I don't know a minute because, <coughs> because of that <coughs> my throat hurts and um, and also very handy to have a <coughs> a drink ready so you can clear your throat a bit. So don't do anything that will make you gag or <laughs> uh, uncomfortable. Take care of your body, so to speak, and um, don't make it too difficult for yourself. Another thing is practice. Um, I mean you practice everything you learn in school so if you want to really sound uh, cool you, nobody expects you to do it perfectly at the first time on the spot you know so there's why not practice it's it's your hobby I mean if you do a sport you practice so why don't you practice when you do role play? very logical but I know people may think it's weird um, you can also, uh, if you have kids, it's very easy because they like funny voices. So <laughs> um, another thing to do is, even when you're sitting behind a computer by yourself, like I'm doing now, and I'm doing it actually now, is move around and make uh, gestures. I mean, moving around may be a little bit difficult, uh, but if you have a wireless, heads wireless headset, you can certainly move around. But making gestures with your hands is something... Uh, that you can do it will help you get into into character and um, you know I usually a lot of there's a when I play there's a lot of pointing going on and uh, waving of the hands and uh, I'm, I'm actually doing it right now so yeah it, it, it will help you to um, get into your character um, a fun thing to also have is like have a catchphrase when I played Ralph, he had a particular curse. Uh, Olive Rina's titties, it, he would say it. And it 
if you practice that single catchphrase um, and there's a scene and there is an opportunity to say it um, it will immediately bring everything in yourself in focus in that character and it's sort of it, it if you use it well enough it functions sort of like uh, an on and off switch um, for your character it's a, like a starting point or an or even an ending point sometimes to switch between yourself and your character well that's that's how I experienced it at least um, uh, a very uh, a very good thing to have is a, a reference sheet like I already said you know if you have a, s a certain profession you can have all kinds of jargon on it but also um, if you're from a if you playing s a person with a particular accent or they are from a different region you can uh, note all kinds of words for instance if you're playing something in Warhammer like Italian that would be something like an Italian you could say uh, Vero, vero, that means yes, yes, sure, uh, clear, or, or claro, or uh, ciao, you know, stuff like, uh, simple stuff, conversational stuff that would be um, easy to understand in context. You mean, I can use all kinds of very difficult to understand Italian words, but you would not know what I was saying, but if I was uh, saying like, oh, yes, yes, si, si, claro, claro, you would understand what the, c the character is saying. Um, so those little terms, just you know, go to Google Translate and you know, yes, and, but, uh, no, if, or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, little words, you know, or something uh, um, for uh, the sky or a weapon, you know, stuff like that uh, is easy to uh, to find and to use in the in the game, and it will make your character sound uh, more from that area and also cuss words of course that's those are the most fun things to uh <laughs> to look up and to use and um yeah just um also you can find a lot of them on google translate and google translate also has the option to um uh you know to to uh play them out so you know what they sound like because sometimes it's difficult to know how a word is spoken and um, certainly get your inspiration from anywhere uh, movies people you meet on the street um, d well people you see on the TV on the TV and the news or whatever um, yeah if you hear something uh, from somebody you know say some s s somebody says something interesting you can uh, make a note of it and use it but uh, beware uh, sounds a bit overly dramatic but take care that you're if when you're trying to uh, do a, f uh, a voice of a known character um, there's a pitfall uh, that you will become that character for instance uh, uh, um, this this uh, noble mole he's a I forget every time he's a custodian a warden uh, he's a distinguished gentleman, so to speak, and let's say the player voicing him, uh, he's got it, that he wants to sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something, you know, and then some t s all of a sudden you're get to the chopper and um, you're playing this, you're getting out of character with this character because it's become, it became Arnold Schwarzenegger instead of M Mole, you know, or, uh, you know, so... Um, try to be careful um, with um, trying to be aware that what you're doing is uh, not emoting your character but also emoting this very well known character uh, well at least characters that other people know it can be very fun to actually play Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> for instance or something I'm not particularly good at stuff like that but um, yeah can be fun. So um, let's see if we um, can find, if we can apply this to, uh, for instance, well, let's take uh, Groger. And um, just as a note, I've put the those over here and those over there because one thing to also 
note if you know if you if you are not comfortable with it or if it it's just too hard for you or um, if you just don't know simply don't do it I mean uh, this is some androgynous looking fellow uh, girl I don't even know um, and I have zero inspiration on uh, how to play this person probably uh, a little bit higher pitched uh, I think it's out of my range um, this is Celicia a woman um, I think she's a tough cookie and uh, um, she would probably sound uh, with, a, with a rougher voice uh, and I can only do like uh, Terry Gilliam Monty Python uh, woman voices so that would be inappropriate for her. it would be very funny I could do it like her but that's not what this character deserves so that's why uh, maybe I would not even play characters like this if I had a choice or if I do have to play characters like this I would just use my normal voice and a slight accent um, on the other hand, here we have Groger, an actor, um, and this kind of custodian, sneaky son of a, I think. Um, these I feel comfortable playing, so in this example I will try to find a voice for one or two of them, let's see. Um, Let's apply it to Groger first. Where are they from? Well, let's see. Where was he from? Nordland. Nordland. So maybe a little hard R and D. Like I said, Nordland was the place where he saw daylight for the first time. Something like that. A little bit of an accent. With an... Uh, I don't know how you call that sound at the end of a sentence. But when it goes up, like uh, Scandinavian. So, you know, there immediately get, where is he from? Uh, that's the accent, basically. Um, as far as I know, Nordland is just Dreikspiel, so there's no real, uh, real different in language in Warhammer. Um, his status is, he's at the bottom, uh, but he is an actor. So he would probably have a large vocabulary and be very verbose and maybe he could even emulate a very natural speech because he's trained like that. So to perform he would speak like this, but in his normal voice, just in everyday conversation, he would talk like this. I don't know, I'm just making shit up as I go, which is the best thing to do always. Um, age, gender, race, well he's just a normal dude. Um, He's quite young. Uh, my own voice is maybe a little too low. I don't have a really low voice, but when I would play him, I would maybe, uh, you know, uh, talk a little bit higher. I am uh, Groger Kumlitz from uh, Nordland. Oh, what are you doing? I'm an actor. I don't know. Something. It, it, like I said, practice. Um, it takes more than just five minutes to get uh, the, the 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 voice for your character but uh, this uh, high voice uh, I'm also thinking about uh, where where you get your inspiration uh, uh, curb your enthusiasm Larry David you know the, the, he talks like that he talks like that you know it, it's also something so it could be completely different um, what do they look like? Well, let's have a good look at him. He looks fairly normal. He looks youngish, so the high voice would be good. Uh, there's no real... Maybe he looks like he, he listens a little bit. If if you want to have some kind of comedian, a comic, uh, you know, some, 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 some comic element to it. But that's just flavor. I think he's he's fairly 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 normal. I don't know. Fairly normal dude. Uh, so no particularities. Um, so uh, yeah. So Groger. Uh, my name is Groger. I'm from uh, Northland. Uh, and I'm an actor. 
and I'm just uh, uh, maybe maybe he's young and his voice goes from high to low. You know that could be a thing. Anyway, and uh, here we've got Mole. He's a warden, and uh, if you look at this uh, this picture, what immediately speaks to me is he's kind of he's kind of kind of roguish. You know, I'm a fixer. I don't know where he's from because I didn't uh, I didn't give him a background, but uh, I imagine. Uh, or he can be very, very British. Hello, sir. How are you today? My name is Mole. Hello, lady. How are you doing? You know, he, he, he could be, uh, he could be like that. Or he, he could even, I mean, his status is pretty, his silver one is his middle class. So he, he could be like, hello, ladies, when he's in a sociable uh, situation. But that's all right. You know, really, with a with a with a happy, you know, lower class accent. You know, you can switch between the two, coach switching, as you call it. Um, sure. Um, any particularities? Well, you could shout very loudly and say, "Here I am!" You know, one of those um, sort of like uh, Errol Flynn kind of type. You know, those old movies. How they always speak very loudly and very, uh, uh, how do you call it? Eloquent and, uh, enunciate, you know, or Lord Fleshheart from Blackadder also comes to mind, you know. Ha <laughs> ha! I, I would have to watch it, but again, to get the particularities of that, but that's the kind of type of uh, person that is. And also, it it's with it, like it's, it's within my range, so. Yeah, that's that's the two characters there. Um like I said I spent like 5 minutes determining uh, a sound for these two persons. Normally it would take much longer time. You would try it out uh and practice practice practice. So, that's it for this video. I um I hope you liked it. I hope you uh, can uh, make use of it. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.